What's up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell. Welcome back, if you're a returning viewer. Um, we are going to do a recap episode today, and we're also going to talk about the future of this show, Mondays in Middle Earth, um, what we're working on, um, sort of what I think the timeline's going to look like, so on and so forth, and go from there. Um, if you have been here for a while some of this stuff is going to be old news to you because i'm going to be rehashing a few things uh but if you're new uh there might be some new information here for you so if that's the case uh welcome get rid of the little cable that's just sticking out there oh that's there mondays in middle earth started on april 4th 2022 as a very naive attempt to perhaps read through the hobbit the lord of the rings and the similar ahead of the premiere of the rings of power season one i had it in my mind that i could do it in that timeline because i wanted to re-educate myself on tolkien because it had been a very long time since i read the books uh, the last time i read the books was before the peter jackson films so 20 plus years ago and the internet was not a th a, as big of a thing back then as it is today there were not there were no wikis there was no social media um, I remember there was a website, it may have been the OneRing.net, I don't even remember, but there was a website dedicated to the production of Peter Jackson's films and like covering stuff, but it was a forum, that was it, you know, no social media, just forums. And I remember being involved in that, but beyond that it was just like, you know, I had always read the books, I'd read them several times growing up. There was a period of my life, this is before the internet, before video games, before all of these things, you know, I used to read six books a week, like a book a day, I would read a book a day. and the, the Lord of the Rings books were something I read every year for a period of time from probably the time I was 12 to 18, 19 years old. Um, the movies came out when I was 21. The Peter Jackson, the first movie came out in 2001 when I was 21. So the last time I read these books was 1999, 2000. So getting back to reread them, one of the reasons I wanted to do that is because when, when all of this stuff started to happen around Rings of Power last year after the Super Bowl commercial, my channel kind of blew up. You know, I did a couple of videos around that first trailer and I was like, what the, what is this? I thought we were getting a show about, you know, the second age and, and instead we're getting all, what is this? You know, I, cause I hadn't been following the production of Rings of Power other than I had seen a couple of snippets and I, and I remember the original press release was like, they shared a map of like Numenor and there was like a second age Numenor. Oh, this is going to be awesome. They're going to be filming the Silmarillion content. And then it, we get to f come to find out when they did that initial video and then the article the interview that they did with Payne and McKay and they were like we're gonna write the novel that Tolkien never wrote and my brain just went the fuck you are like what is this show gonna be like you guys are off the reservation at this point like and so that that sparked me to you know like pay attention and what I started seeing was that there were a lot of people who were making some ridiculous comments and claims and all this you know, Tolkien said this, and Tolkien did this, and Tolkien meant this, and I'm like, who are all these fucking people who are supposedly experts on Tolkien? Like, anybody who's read the books knows the story, and then I start reading what these people are saying, and you've got 50 different opinions about what Tolkien meant by this, and then you have all these people who are saying things like, well, Tolkien didn't actually mean that in The Hobbit. Because if you go back and read the letters that he published here and the notes that he did here and, and these things that Christopher, Tubbs, Christopher Tolkien published in 1997 in History of Middle Earth, Part 9, Subsection 16, Paragraph 2, Sentence 3, you'll find out that Tolkien actually meant this other thing. And I'm like, y'all are crazy, right? Like, that's not how canon works. Like, that's not how, you know, notes, like, as an author... Look at Star Wars as an example. Originally, it was going to be called you know, Luke Star Killer, and over time, the course, the character of Luke Skywalker emerged, and eventually, the films were released, and the character was known as Luke Skywalker. You can't go back forty years later and claim that the character of Luke Skywalker isn't actually canon because George Lucas actually meant this because he wrote these three different drafts and this is the draft he mentions in the letters that he wrote to his friend where he said that this is my favorite version of the character and blah 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 blah. That's not how canon works. Canon is based on, you know, things that are officially published and and etc. And if you look at and, and this is my opinion, obviously, other people are gonna have different opinions. My opinion of Tolkien's works is that The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, those are canon. 
The Silmarillion is iffy territory for me, but I do consider it to be canon, mostly because we have all this supporting evidence to suggest that it was being worked on and was mostly finished. Some people are going to argue about that. I already know who you are because you've already mentioned it in my comments before. You went, That's not true. Christopher Tolkien had to do a ton of work to get it into a publishable format. Yes, but look at all the works. C.S. Lewis had read the Silmarillion, referenced the Silmarillion in his space trilogy. You know, the, it was a thing that was in the process of being worked on and was going to be the next book that was going to be published. And yes, Christopher Tolkien had to do some work, but it was published relatively quickly after Tolkien's death. And that's it. That's that's the canon. So when I saw all these people making all these ridiculous comments and claims and 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 etc. around these works that were published 20, 30, 40 years after Tolkien's death by Christopher Tolkien, and then getting into where we are now in 2023 with additional books being published that don't even have anything to do with Christopher Tolkien, because he's passed away now, and they're just some random people that have been hired by the estate and the publisher to create these other books. None of that is, I hate to burst your bubble, folks, but none of that is canon. Like, the canon is the, the, the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings, and yeah, the Silmarillion. So, that's what inspired me to want to start this this show was to go like, what are these people talking about? Because I don't remember half this stuff being remotely true in the first place. Um, and so wanting to go back and reread The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and The Silmarillion um, to educate myself to better understand what they were doing with Rings of Power. Now, ultimately, you know, my reading pace is much slower than I anticipated because of other factors in life and everything else. So I, you know, I started off, I think I did The Hobbit in one or two episodes, and then I did the first part of The Fellowship of the Ring, I was doing multiple chapters per episode, and then by the time I got to Council of Elrond, the Council of Elrond was a big enough chapter that by the time I got through with it, it was like a, I don't know, 30 or 40 minute episode, and I went, oh wow, um, I should probably just start, start doing one chapter per episode, and that's what it evolved into, and so here we are. This is coming out on April 17th, I believe, um, 2023, roughly 54 weeks after the series first started. So we've done 50 plus episodes um, since we started. Um, and I finished The Return of the King last week. So just over a year into this series, wrapped up the, the trilogy, The Hobbit and the first trilogy. And now we're looking ahead to The Silmarillion. So... This episode today is, is a recap, but also talking about what lies ahead for the show. So um, I'm going to talk about some things here. I'm going to be very candid with everybody, very frank, because there are just realities to doing what I do. And I want everybody to be aware of, of where we're heading moving into the future with this particular show. Um, I still have the appendices of The Return of the King to do. I don't know what format that's going to take yet. I don't know if I'm going to go... I have to look at it and break it down into what I think are going to be the episodes and then just do those episodes. It'll, it might be a few episodes, um, but I also have to look at the length. It might be something I could do in two episodes. I don't know yet. I haven't had the time to sit down and really break that down. It was very easy in chapter format because I could just read a chapter and dissect it. The Silmarillion is, a, is also another beast because I haven't read that in 20... <sighs> plus years um i probably haven't read the Silmarillion since 97 or 98 if i had to guess it's been a long time so you know 25 years um and i don't know what that's going to look like yet but i will be going through that and i anticipate the Silmarillion is going to take me man all the other books have taken me about six months maybe not about six months it took me you know three months per book to get through the you know a little bit more than that. more like yeah, a little bit more than that. Um, if we had one year essentially broken down, I mean, it's about four months per book, realistically, because The Hobbit I did pretty quick. So let's say four months per book. I would say the similar one is going to take me at least four months. Um, and we still have the appendices to go through. But if I, if I really want to break the similar alien down, it'll probably take me six months. Just that'll be the kind of planning ahead and thinking about the similar alien is going to take me about six In months. In any case, um, we're not done yet. Um, we're going to be going through the appendices in the next couple few episodes. Again, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. And then we're going to get into the Silmarillion. And I need to, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to open up the table of contents and try to dissect how I think that's going to break down. And like I said, it might be something that takes six months. 
It might be something that only takes a few months. It depends on how it breaks down. The thing with the Silmarillion is, is there a lot of stuff in there that, like I said, I only read that book twice. So I don't have the familiarity with it that I do with the Lord of the Rings. And they were it was a long time ago the last time. So I'm essentially going to be coming into it. I mean, I remember the broad strokes, you know, the broad strokes I remember. But there's a ton of stuff. I don't remember character names. I don't remember timelines or anything like that. So going in and reading through all that stuff is going to be uh, helpful to me to understand things and um, et cetera. Anyway, um, as we get into the similar in, I have a huge ask for everyone. And it's not the financial ask. The financial ask is always going to be there. It's always going to be, if you can, please support. The ask I have is, I need this to grow beyond what it is if we're going to actually pursue it beyond the Silmarillion. So that means people actively, not just supporting it financially, but going out there and sharing it with people. Putting it on Reddit, you know, putting it in their own Discord channels, sharing it on their social media feeds, um, asking their friends to, you know, have conversations around it, so on and so forth. Um, and obviously, yeah, like, subscribe, and all those good things, because those help with the algorithm. But Mostly it's like if this is going to go beyond something that's only getting 150 views per episode. Um, again, I look at the scope of what I'm doing here where I have 7,500 followers on YouTube as of this recording. And, you know, a lot of my, you know, like my game guides will get conservatively, especially if I'm doing like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars Republic, you know, like my most recent one for the class guide for Star Wars Republic is up to like 20,000 views now and it's a month old. And most of my game guides will do you know, 300 to 500 views in the first 48 hours. And then you get all the residual traffic and those will end up getting like 5,000 a month. Um, that's the kind of traffic I need to see on these videos for me to consider it to be worth it to continue it beyond the Silmarillion. And the only way that happens is by, yeah, the like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, comments and all that good stuff, but share it, get it out there, have this become a thing um, and, and go from there. Um, I like doing it. And I'm going to continue because of I want to read these things. But beyond that, we'll see. In any case, um, I may regret putting this out there at some point down the road. I'm I'm, used, I'm a very open person. Anybody who's around me long enough and has been around my channel for a long time knows that I do these blog episodes once in a while where I just talk about life and things in general. And, you know, my wife will sometimes be like, you shouldn't put that out there. And I'm like, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't, but I do anyway because – I'm an honest person, and, and I think that it's good to have honest conversations with people about just how it is. This is life. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the channel is going to get to 10,000 followers this summer. That'd be really cool. We had, I mean, March was a, uh, March into April has been a pretty good growth month. Um, and we're doing some new things on the channel with lots of game guides and everything else. And we'll continue to cover you know, rings of power as we get news around it. Um, also, we're going to be continuing to cover news around all things. You know, I'm watching Star Wars and Star Trek. These, these are big franchises that mean a lot to me. So I will continue to talk about these things as we get deeper into the year. And, you know, it's going to be great. I mean, Chris and I have an objective right now of like, you know, want to get to 10,000 followers this year. That's a good milestone. 10,000 followers is a milestone and it's totally achievable. But the next milestone for us is the financial milestone. It's like we would love to have and I, we haven't put this out there, so I'm just I'm saying this for the scope of people who want to understand where the channel's going. You know, we have an internal goal of saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna feel like we made it when the channel has a hundred members, and we 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 hit a thousand dollars a month of gross revenue. Um, that's when we're gonna feel like we made it. And we're not there yet. We, we still have a ways to go. And that needs to be something that consecutively happens for several months on end. It needs to be at least six months in a row of hitting $1,000 a month with 100 members on the channel. When we have that happen, um, that's when we're going to feel like we, we've made it and we can have a little bit of breathing room in terms of you know what kind of content we spend our time on on the channel. But that's not happened yet. We have some months where the revenue is... You know, I think my biggest month was like $1,200 back in like August of last year. But most months, it's like, you know, we'll see a spike. We might do $800 one month. One month might be $300. One, might, one month might be $500. You know, the reality is that um, every month is different based on different factors. Um, so it's, it's very much a, um, in a phase of growth. And we're just looking at 
continuing to grow until we see the consistency that we need to be able to consider this, you know, something that is a reliable source of income as opposed to something that is not quite reliable. Um, it is there. Hopefully I understand the difference between dependable and reliable because it is, it is a dependable source of revenue in the sense that there's always something coming in, but reliable in the sense that we can always rely that there's going to be that much coming in. And that, that hasn't happened yet. So like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, share it out. If you haven't watched the previous episode, you stumbled across this for some random reason. You watched this whole thing and you're getting to the end going, who is this asshole and why is he saying all these things? Go watch the other episodes. There are 50 plus, I don't even know, 52, 53 episodes of Mondays in Middle Earth where we just read through The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, got to this point, and there will be more. If we do six months of content, uh, you know, we'll have another six months of episodes to, to, to chew through. So that's another 24 um, episodes, 20 to 24 episodes. So hopefully you'll stick around for all those things. To those of you who do support and have supported in the past, thank you so much. Again, it's not so much the you know, super chats and super thanks to the memberships. Those are great. Like I said, it's mostly looking at the amount of traffic I get from all the other content that I do on this channel versus the fact that these only get, you know, 70 to 150 views there and sometimes a little bit more residually. Uh, there has to be more to be able to consider this a successful venture beyond just a hobby project that I'm putting out there. So if you want it to go beyond the Silmarillion, you know what to do. Thanks so much for listening to the end of this and my rant. Till next time, everybody, stay safe. Happy reading. We'll see you in the next one.